lecture we are going to solve the CBSE sample paper 2019 so let's get going question 1 find the value of a for which point p a by 3 2 is the midpoint of the line segment joining the points q minus 5 4 and r minus 1 0 so let's solve it solution so given points are q minus 5 4 and R minus 1 0 now the midpoint of QR will be given by x1 plus x2 by 2 and y1 plus y2 by 2 which will be minus 5 minus 1 by 2 4 by 2 which will be minus 6 by 2 that will be minus 3 and 4 by 2 will be 2 but p is given to be what p is given to be a by 3 2 so this should be equal to this so therefore a by 3 should be equal to minus 3 this means a should be equal to minus 3 into 3 equal to minus 9 question 2 find the value of k for which one root of the quadratic equation kx squared minus 14x plus 8 is equal to 0 is 2 so what is the given equation kx square minus 14x plus 8 equal to 0 let's call it 1 now since x equal to 2 is a root of equation 1 therefore x equal to 2 will satisfy this equation right so what we are going to do is we are going to substitute x equal to 2 in equation 1 therefore k x square minus 14 x plus 8 equal to 0 or this will be 4k minus 28 plus 8 equal to 0 or 4k will be equal to minus 28 plus 8 will be minus 20 we take it to the other side becomes plus 20 so k will be equal to 20 by 4 equal to 5 another option for question 2 is this Find the value or values of k for which the equation x square plus 5kx plus 16 equal to 0 has real and equal roots. So first of all, let's write the given equation x square plus 5kx plus 16 equal to 0. Let's call it 1 again. Now, for this equation to have equal roots, the discriminant of this equation should be equal to 0 right so what will be the discriminant of this equation discriminant d will be equal to b square minus 4ac right equal to b square what is b here it's 5k square minus 4 a is 1 here c is 16 here okay this should be equal to 0 for real and equal roots this implies 25k square minus 64 should be equal to 0 or k square should be equal to we take 64 to the other side becomes plus 64 and then we shift this 25 to the other side it will go in division this implies k will be equal to plus minus root over 64 by 25 this will be plus minus root over 64 is 8 root over 25 is 5 
So there'll be two values of k plus 8 by 5 and minus 8 by 5. Now many students would forget to put this plus minus. So be sure you put this plus minus here. Now the hint that you'll be getting two values, more than one value of k is in the question itself. Look here, it's written value or values. Okay. Write the value of cot square theta minus one by sine square theta. This is question number three, one of the options for question number three. So, okay, so cot square theta minus one by sine square theta will be equal to what? Cot square theta, can we write 1 by sine square theta as cosec square theta. Why? Because 1 by sine theta is nothing but cosec theta. Now, we know that cosec square theta minus cot square theta is equal to what? Is equal to 1. That's a standard result, right? So what we'll do is we'll take minus 1 common here. So we can write it as cos x square theta minus cot square theta. And what is this? This is 1. And there's a minus outside. So it'll be minus 1. So this is the answer. This is just rough work. Second option for question 3. If sine theta equal to cos theta, then find the value of 2 tan theta plus cos square theta. So, okay, so sine theta equal to cos theta. For theta equal to 45 degrees, we know that sine theta equal to cos theta equal to 1 by root 2. So let's substitute theta equal to 45 degrees here in this expression that we want to calculate and then we'll find the value, right? So, therefore we can say theta is 45 degrees so therefore tan theta will be what tan 45 degrees which will be 1 and cos theta will be what cos 45 degrees equal to 1 by root 2 so therefore this is the expression whose value we want to calculate 2 tan theta plus cos square theta will be equal to tan theta is what 1 so 2 into 1 plus cos square theta cos theta is how much 1 by root 2 so we'll do 1 by root 2 because it's cos square theta we'll square it up so 2 plus half that's two and a half or 5 by 2 right question 4 Okay, so if nth term of an AP is 2n plus 1, what is the sum of its first three terms? So let's say the terms are a1, a2, a3, and so on. Fine. Now, what is an given to be? An is 2n plus 1, right? So can we find the first term a1? We just need to substitute n equal to 1 here. So a1 will be 2 into 1 plus 1 equal to 3. What will be a2? Put n equal to 2 in 1. So you'll get 2 into n plus 1. So this will be 5. a3 you can write directly because this is an ap. This is 3. The first term is 3. The second term is 5. The third term will be 7. But even if you put n equal to 3 in equation 1, so you'll get 2n plus 1 equal to 7. Now, what do we need to find? We need to find the sum of its first three terms. That is a1 plus a2 plus a3. Therefore, a1 plus a2 plus a3 will be equal to 3 plus 5 plus 7 equal to 15. Let's come to the next question, which is question five. In figure, if AD equal to six centimeters, 
db equal to 9 centimeters ae equal to 8 centimeters and ec equal to 12 centimeters and angle ade is 48 degrees we need to find the value of angle abc okay so do you notice something this is 6 and this is 9 right so if we take the ratio AD by DB we get 6 by 9 which is 2 by 3 and if we take the ratio AE is to EC or, or AE by EC we get 8 by 12 which is again 2 by 3 so they are equal which means we can use one of the theorems we have learned let's see so AD by DB is equal to what 6 centimeters by 9 centimeters equal to 2 by 3 let's call it 1 and what is AE by EC is 8 centimeters by 12 centimeters which is again 2 by 3 from 1 and 2 we can say that AD by DB will be equal to AE by EC which means that DE will be parallel to BC this DE will be parallel to BC why converse of Thales theorem Right. which means now see D is parallel to BC now angle AD is given to be 48 degrees so what will angle ABC be angle ABC which we want to find will be equal to angle ADE equal to 48 degrees why because there will be corresponding angles angle ADE and ABC are corresponding angles because D is parallel to BC and if you take AB as the transversal they will be corresponding angles and hence they will be equal ok question 6 after how many decimal places will the decimal expansion of 23 divided by 2 to the power 4 into 5 to the power 3 terminate ok So, we have 23 by 2 to the power 4 into 5 cube. Now, what I am going to do is, now this is 2 to the power 4. I can write it as 2 into 2 cube, right? And into 5 cube. That remains as it is. Equal to 23 by 2 into, can I club these two? So I'll say can I write it as this right so that will be 23 by 2 I just I'm clubbing 23 and 2 together now and here I've got 2 into 5 is 10 to the power 3 23 by 2 is what 11.5 right and here 10 cube is 1000 so this will be point zero one one so after how many places does the decimal expansion terminate it's one two three four so therefore the decimal expansion will terminate after four decimal places right question seven this is one of the option the first option for question seven okay the HCF and LCM of two numbers are 9 and 360 respectively if one number is 45 find the other number now we know that HCF into LCM will be equal to what 
product of two numbers right product of two numbers is equal to their HCF into their LCM now this means HCF is given to be what 9 LCM is given to be what 360 equal to one number is 45 what will be the other number let's call it a we'll say the other number the unknown number is equal to a we can say that okay what will be a now a will be 9 into 360 this 45 goes down there so it will be this or a equal to 9 1 times 5 times now 5 1 5 72 times a equal to 72 which is the answer okay next up is the second option for question number seven show that seven minus root five is irrational given that root five is irrational now see in this question what we are going to do is we are going to assume that seven minus root five is rational and then if you're able to come to a contradiction then it would mean that our assumption was wrong and that seven minus root five is irrational so we are going to say let 7 minus root 5 be rational therefore can we write 7 minus root 5 as p by q that's the standard definition of a rational number right we can write it in the form of p by q where p and q are co prime numbers and q is not equal to 0. now let's calculate root 5 from this so 7 minus p by q will be equal to root 5 i shifted this minus root 5 to the rhs it became plus root 5 and i also shifted this p by q to the lhs it became minus p by q then we take lcm as q we'll get 7q minus p by q equal to root 5 now clearly 7q minus p by q is rational because p and q are co-prime numbers and q is not equal to 0 so 7q minus p by q is rational which should imply that root 5 should be what rational because root 5 is equal to 7q minus p by q but what is given it is given that root 5 is irrational but root 5 is irrational right that is what is given therefore our assumption is wrong because we arrived at a contradiction this is a contradiction right this and this right so therefore our assumption is wrong hence 7 minus root 5 is irrational understood first option for question 8 find the 20th term from the last term of the AP 3 8 13 to 53 now see given AP is given AP is 3 8 13 to 53 what is the common difference of this AP? Let's call it 1. This is the first AP. What is the common difference D1 of this AP? That's 8 minus 3 equal to 5. Now we need to find the 20th 
term from the last term of this AP. So what we are going to do is we are going to invert the AP. So we are going to start writing the AP from 253 onwards and we are going to reach the last term 3. So let us write the AP1 in reverse order. Why am I doing this? See, I need 20th term from the last term. So if I invert this AP, the given AP, what will happen is I'll then find the 20th term from the start, right? So 20th term from the last term of AP1 will be the 20th term from the start of AP2, the new AP, which we get by inverting the AP1. So new AP becomes Two fifty three thirteen eight three. Clear now for this new AP, let's call it AP two. What will be the common difference? Common difference here of this AP will be negative of this common difference D one because it's written in reverse order, or you just take the this one from these two terms from last two terms you can find the common difference that will be minus 5 now see we need to find the 20th term from the start of this AP right so a 20 a n is what a n is a 1 plus n minus 1 into d right so using this a 20 will be what a 1 we are considering this AP, AP2. So the first term is 253 plus n will be equal to what? n will be equal to 20 because we are finding the 20th term minus 1 into d is what? minus 5. Or A20 will be equal to 253 plus 19 into minus 5 equal to 253 minus 95 that will be equal to 253 minus 100 is 153 but we just have to subtract 95 so we'll add 5 158 is the answer this brings us to the second option for question 8 if 7 times the 7th term of an AP is equal to 11 times its 11th term then find its 18th term okay so we know that a n is equal to what the nth term of an ap is equal to what the first term a1 plus n minus 1 into d so let's substitute so 7 times 7 term let's find a7 first a7 will be equal to what a1 plus n will be equal to 7 minus 1 into d or a7 will be equal to a1 plus 60 let's call it 1 we might need this information okay now we'll find the 11th term a11 will be equal to what we'll put n equal to 11 here right so a1 plus 11 minus 1 into d which means a11 equal to a1 plus 10 d let's call it 2 now what is given from the question from the question 7 times the 7th term that is a7 is equal to 11 times its 11th term right or 7 into a7 is what a1 plus 6d equal to 11 times a11 is what a1 plus 10d or 7a1 plus 42d equal to 11a1 plus 110d 
let's continue this side so let's take all the terms on one side so this means 11 a1 minus 7 a1 plus 110 d minus 42 d is equal to 0 what I did was I shifted both of them both these terms from LHS to RHS that would that would mean 4 times a1 plus 110 minus 40 is 70 and two more so 68 D will be equal to 0 which means now for you can divide throughout by 4 so you'll get a1 plus 68 divided by 4 will be 17 equal to 0 let's call it 3 now find its 18th term let's see what a18 is 18 is we'll put n equal to 18 here in this so a1 plus n minus 1 into d equal to a1 plus 17 d which will be equal to 0 why from 3 because a1 plus 17 d is 0 so 0 is the answer question 9 find the coordinates of the point p which divides the join of a minus 2 5 and b 3 minus 5 in the ratio 2 is to 3 the given points are a minus 2 5 and b 3 minus 5 we need to find p uh, let's call the ratio as m is to n so m is to n is given to be 2 is to 3 now any point which divides the join of two points a b in the ratio m is to n is given by the coordinates of that point are given by m x2 plus n x1 by m plus n and m y2 plus n y1 by m plus n right so we are going to use this result here so therefore p will be let's say the x coordinate of p will be m x2 plus n x1 by m plus n which will be 2 plus 3 equal to 6 minus 6 by 5 that will be equal to 0 what about py the y coordinate of p would be given by m y2 plus n y1 divided by m plus n which will be equal to what minus 10 plus 15 by 5 this will be equal to 5 by 5 equal to 1 so therefore the coordinates of p will be given by 0 1 next question question 10 a card is drawn at random from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards find the probability of getting neither a red card nor a queen card so for this question what we are going to do is we are going to find the probability of getting a red card or a queen card and then we'll subtract it from one to get the probability of getting neither a red card nor a queen so let's solve it so total number of cards total number of red cards is how many 26 total number of queens is how many four number of red queens is two number of black queens is also two 
now this this two has already been counted in these 26 cards so but then we have not counted these two queen cards so probability probability of getting a red or a queen card will be what in the denominator it will be 52 and in the numerator it will be 26 plus 2 that will be equal to 28 by 52 because we have or here so we add the events right so the event of getting either a red card or a queen card so we add now why we did not count this two here we did not add two this two here why because these red queens are already counted in these 26 cards but these black queens two black queens were not counted and we need that in the event right as an option so we are going to add this 2 to this 26 so you'll get 28 by 52 now therefore probability of getting neither a red card or sorry nor a queen will be what 1 minus the probability that we get those two cards either of the two cards so that will be equal to 52 minus 28 by 52 that will be 4 to 24 by 52 which will be 6 4 6 uh, 4 13 6 by 13 is the answer next question question 11 again from probability two dice are thrown at the same time and the product of numbers appearing on them is noted find the probability that the product is a prime number now when two dice are rolled What is the sample space? Sample space would be something like this 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. Then again with 2, first die has 2, the second has 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, so on. Then 3 1 and so on then 4 1 so on 5 1 so on 6 1 so on so we'll get a total of 36 options that forms the sample space the number of elements in the sample space so that's 36 what will any be let's let's find the event first event of getting the product of numbers as a prime number so this is one option 1 2 because 2 is a prime number okay so let's write it this way so 1 2 so if 1 2 is an option 2 1 will also be a part of the event then again 1 3 because 3 is another prime number right so 3 1 then 1 5 because 1 5 is there 5 1 can also be there right so out of these 36 options you can write and check you'll only get these six options right because any other product any other option you take and you take the product of the two numbers it will not be a prime number right so what is n e and e is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 so therefore required probability will be equal to what n e 
by n s that will be equal to 6 by 36 equal to 1 by 6 next question question 12 for what value of p will the following pair of linear equations have infinitely many solutions so given equations are p minus 3 times x plus 3y equal to p which is 1 and then px plus py equal to 12 which is equation 2 now for 1 and 2 to have infinite solutions what is the condition the condition is p minus 3 by p should be equal to 3 by p should be equal to p by 12 now let's call this as 1 this is 2 this is 3 now from 1 and 2 p minus 3 by p equal to 3 by p now one thing to note here is do not cancel these p's in the denominator why because p could be equal to 0 and if p is equal to 0 then you lose that result if you cancel it p equal to 0 even if it's a result that gets eliminated right so we, we are not sure whether p is equal to 0 or not equal to 0 when we are not sure we do not cancel it so we are going to cross multiply so we'll get p into p minus 3 equal to 3p or p square minus 3p equal to 3p now take all the terms to the left hand side so we'll get p square minus 3p minus 3p will be as equal to 0 or p square minus 6p equal to 0 or take p common p minus 6 equal to 0 or p equal to 0 or p minus 6 equal to 0 right or p equal to 0 or plus 6 right let's call it 3 okay now again from 2 and 3 here this is 2 this is 3 from 2 and 3 3 by p should be equal to p by 12 or this cross multiply so 3 into 12 should be equal to p square or p square equal to 36 which means p equal to plus minus 6 and let's call it 4 so from 3 and 4 what is the common value of p p equal to 6 here we have 0 and 6 here we have 6 and minus 6 so 6 is the common value so p equal to 6 will be the answer if you like what you saw don't forget to hit the subscribe button this is Abhishek Chandra signing off take care